Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and today I'm going to talk about my favorite books of the year. I gave 16 books five stars this year. Te technically 19, but three of them were Miss Brown books that are like multiple times reread, so we're ignoring those. You already know that Brandon Sanderson gets five stars for me pretty much every single time. But it's a top 10 list, but I got 16 five stars. So we're gonna do a quick run through of my honorable mentions which in absolutely no order these are the ones that didn't make my top 10 list but I still gave five stars definitely highly recommend so coming of age in Mississippi by Ann Moody biased by Jennifer Everhart money shot volume one by Celie Beatty and Isaac Russell crank or no Celie Beatty Isaac Russell and crank I think is how that is supposed to go the little stranger by Sarah waters a Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, and Me, Moth by Amber McBride. All right, with those six out of the way, let's get into my top 10, um, which I put in order, but I also feel like this order could change at any given time in my mood, so I, I recommend all of these. Uh, Coming in at number 10, I have The Last Nomad Coming of Age in the Somali Desert by Sugary said Sugary Saeed Sal, I believe is how you say her name. Uh, this is nonfiction. It's a memoir about a woman who grew up as a nomad in the Somali desert. And it's just her life story going from being a child in Somalia, uh, going through a civil war, and eventually fleeing to Canada and eventually the US. I do want to give, I guess, content warnings on this one before you go into it because in Somalia they still practice female circumcision and this goes through her experiences with female circumcision as a teenager. Um, it doesn't try to justify female circumcision or anything like that, but she does explain like the cultural significance of it and like why she was fine with it or even like desiring it at the time when she was a child like it's awful and as an adult she knows it's awful but she also knows that it's a cultural thing and this is why it's been done even though it definitely shouldn't be done uh, but it describes female circumcision in extreme graphic detail so be prepared for that. Um, the audiobook is fantastic if you still feel comfortable reading it after that. Um, but yeah, this, this was an amazing story from an amazing woman that I think a lot of people should definitely read. Next up is another memoir, like Who Am I This Year? And it's I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Um, this, like the title's dark, but Jeanette McCurdy's mom was like super fucking abusive. Um, it, it just frankly discusses her life and the trauma she grew up with, how she loved her mom even though her mom was very abusive, and how she struggled with eating disorders and various other like psychological problems because of the way her mother treated her growing up um, and how she's dealt with them, the issues that she keeps finding, how therapies helped her. Like this is, it's frank, um, it's dark, but it's also kind of hilarious because Jeanette McCurdy's hilarious and she's an amazing writer. So highly recommend this one. Also great as an audiobook. Um, she narrates her own audiobook, so yeah. Two really, really good memoirs that are like polar opposites on the content scale. Um, both kind of dark, both really, really good. All right, next we're, we're getting into science fiction. And at number eight, I have Not Into the Night by Tamsin Muir. This one's funny because I gave Gideon the Ninth five stars. It was my favorite book the year I read it. 
then hair of the night I hate it and I was so confused and then we go into Not of the Ninth and I love it again and it's five stars and on this listing it's not my favorite book of the year but this was really really good um Nana as a character hilarious and this one kind of if I hadn't experienced Harrow I probably wouldn't have liked this but I kind of knew the confusing you don't really have any idea what's going on thing that I got to experience with Harrow put it in here okay I get it we're all good um anyway hilarious lesbian necromancers in space like what more do you need to know read this whole goddamn series at number seven I got another third book in the series this one is the conclusion there's another book coming out in that called Electo the Ninth this is a conclusion of this series which is The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik um I, I don't know how to explain this the main character is like my favorite kind of unlikable bitch that I love reading from the perspective of <laughs> So I loved every single book in the series. I think all three of the books in the series have made it to this list. I just like the series. It's a great conclusion. It's not for everybody, but if you really like really bitchy female characters, you'll probably like this series. Number six, I bring you my favorite horror from my favorite classics author, which is The Ghost Stories of Edith Wharton. Edith Wharton has written one of my favorite classic books of all time, top two favorite classic author, um, and then <laughs> this book from her is just a collection of ghost stories. They're great. I love ghost stories. It's my favorite kind of horror is ghost stories and from my favorite classics author. It's perfect nothing special about the ghost stories this is a very personal like I just really like ghost stories and I really like Edith Wharton combine it all together you get this this joy of a book right here at number five I've got Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark um this is horror fantasy where um it's the 1960s Ku Klux Klan ever, like everywhere, but there are demons called Ku Kluxes, I think, um, and they aren't human, but they look like a Klansman, and it's a group of black people who are fighting the demon invasion and killing these awful things, so it's, it's very short, so I don't want to give a whole lot away, but masterful writing, great storytelling, great lesson. I, I loved everything about this. Great horror book. Highly recommended if you haven't read it yet. Next at number four was a, another short little novella that I read this year called The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. And it's a, no a novella that I got as an arc and I didn't, I've never read anything by him. I didn't even know what a kaiju was, but it's a Godzilla creature if you're ignorant like I was. Um, and it's just really a short little novella about a woman who gets like a job of her dreams during the pandemic. It pays, she loses her job, gets fired right before the pandemic. Uh, she make, or she gets a job offer out of nowhere where she's getting paid like an insane amount, but she can't really know anything about it and it just feels too good to be true. It's just a a really interesting story with a fun little plot. I enjoyed it. It was great. Next up at number three, my nemesis, Catherine Valenti. Uh, <laughs> if you've seen my other videos, you know if she writes a novella, I give it five stars. If she writes a full-length book, I DNF it because I hate it so much. I have the weirdest love-hate relationship with this author, author but this novella so obviously it's five stars um it's a story of a woman who has the perfect husband um but something is weirds happening in eh. in you you're kind of like is this a 
Stepford Wife's type of situation, like what is going on? all really confused but the plot twist in the end I didn't see it coming at all a lot of people say they guessed it really easily I didn't see it coming but I loved it I love the plot twist to this so um, if you're a certain type of person that I'm not gonna say because it gives it away you're gonna hate this so just know going in that there's a chance you're gonna hate this but there's also a chance you're gonna really love it but I can't tell you what makes the difference there. But it's really short. So even if you hate it, you're only wasting a couple hours of your time. It'll be fine. At number two, I've got Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, this was wild. <laughs> like, being in the head of this character, you're just like, dude, what's wrong with you? But that's what makes the story great, is because Stephen Graham Jones gets in the head of this, like, wild kid. And it's like watching a car crash the entire time, going like, you can't actually think that the way you're thinking is okay, that it's right. Like, how are you justifying these things? How are you justifying these awful things? what is wrong with you but that's what makes it so great like this is amazing i loved it just it, it's another short one just just read it and my number one book of the year is a book you probably never heard of which is the red tree by caitlin kiernan if you're a fan of the whole book within a book within a book thing that house of leaves did but didn't like the like twisty turny like going back and forth pages, reading upside down thing, you just want like a straight book but like the story within a story within a story, that's what this book gives you. It also has a really really awful bitchy main character um, which if you guys don't know is obviously one of my favorite like tropes where bitchy women written by women authors. Rarely do I like bitchy women written by men bitchy women written by women authors. I love it. <laughs> we have this woman who uh, she, she broke up with her girlfriend, moved to the middle of nowhere and to write a book because she's like way past due when she's um, supposed to get to an editor and then she rents this old house, finds a book in the basement, written by a guy who was staying there and then has all of these like really weird out of time out of space experiences while reading this book um, and then she writes a diary about it so this book is her editor publishes a manuscript that they found in this house that she was staying in after she commits suicide which she takes as a manuscript that the author was writing but it's really but it reads like a diary but the contents of the diary are so weird that it can't actually be a real diary so a book so you've got the guy's book that she's writing a diary on that her editor thinks is a fiction that she publishes but it's a book written by a completely different woman who's not any of the characters so like a book within a book within a book within a book <laughs> is wild uh, but it has like a bunch of that spatial distortion again that you find in the house of leaves fantastic book really well written ugly ass cover which is why i'm sure no one's picked this up because this cover is fucking awful this character looks nothing like the main characters described this ignore the cover just read the book and those are my top 10 favorite books this year I had a thing for very short books this year. There's a couple of longer ones in here, but for the most part, the things that I enjoyed were novellas. So I'm going to keep that vibe going into next year. And if you guys have any really, really good novellas that you read or have picked up and you haven't read yet, let me know down in the comments because I want to read more novellas because I really, really enjoy novellas. Anyway. That's it for today. 
I'll see you in the next video.